Leta 2017 je Toyota postala glavni mobilnostni partner olimpijskih in pa paraolimpijskih igr. Sploh ta para je zelo, zelo pomembna, zato ker to so tudi leta, ko je Toyota začela svojo transformacijo iz proizvojavca avtomobilov v ponudnika mobilnostnih storitev in seveda mobilnostnih storitev za vse. Ampak za razliko od preteklih olimpijskih igr pa je letošnja Pariška promocija posvečena predvsem vodikovim tehnologijam. Toyota je namreč zdaj Paris pretransformirala v demonstracijo vodikovega ekosistema. We wanted to show the world that Toyota is not about battery, electric or hydrogen or hybrid, it's about everything. So the enemy is carbon and in Europe we want to make a special focus on hydrogen because we believe that hydrogen will complement battery electric and hybrid. And so we have about 14 different hydrogen applications in Paris during the Games. Med temi 14 različnimi načine rabene vam najprej pokažem nekaj tistih, ki so objektivno gledano posem obrobnega pomena. Kati sveda se strinjamo, da je fajn, če nam pizza speče peč v kateri gori vodik in na bodalca s kosicami iz vodikovega žara so tegnila. Ampak samo zato, da bi se ukvarjali s takšnimi nepravicemi, potem res ne bi bilo smiseno vlagati milijone v razvoj vodikove infrastrukture. Vse te majhne napravice namreč lahko nahranimo tudi drugače. In ja, isto velja za električno kolo, ki energijo dobiva ne samo iz nog, ampak tudi z elektrolizo. So this is the hydrogen production. So we have a tank of water on the other side. We purify the water, electrolysis, which is turning H2O, so water, into oxygen, which is released in the air, and hydrogen, which we compress in this module, and then we send to the other side to the storage. What are the challenges for producing that kind of charger? The challenges of hydrogen is that it is a very small molecule and in order to store significant uh, quantities in terms of energy, you need to compress it a lot. So the compression is really a key piece in the technology of hydrogen. So simple uh, connection here and then just you're going to hear some, you see that now we have a, some, a pressure inside. I can feel it, yes. But it doesn't get warm. No, because it's very quick, so it doesn't have much time to, to heat up. How much time does it usually take to, to charge that kind of bike? Less it's almost one. finished. It is finished. Less than one minute. Less than one minute. Vozil sem še eno električno kolo, to je imelo poleg sladoleda tudi dve ne bateri, ampak dve vodikovi kartuši. So this is a, a pedelec or a... Uh... You can use, uh, if you want assistance the, of electricity, you have just pressed the button here. Aha, so and I can go yeah. without pedaling. Yes, exactly. Okay, but it should be a hybrid, so I should pedal yes. and have a yes. assist. So you, uh, this is the car bridge of uh, hydrogen. Yeah. Yes, is this one. It's only 5 kg. You can press, it's not very heavy. Uh -huh, now it's full, okay. Yes. With hydrogen you have assistance uh, for the pedal. Okay. And after you have, in, in front you have um, a fridge. Uh -huh, for? Yeah, for, the, for making, uh, the hydrogen make electricity for the fridge. And in front we have ice cream. How powerful is this? Uh, one um, cartridge of tank of hydrogen, you can use five hours. Five hours of doing the bridge or? Uh, both, together. Both, both together. Okay, for uh -huh. meeting, it's very right. easy. Just press, yeah, no, just right, left side. Uh -huh. Left side and then? Right side, and, uh, and after we go back. Okay, I will go and deliver. Yeah, you can try it, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay, without assistance. It's very heavy, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Naslednje vozilo s Toyotinim vodikovim pogonom je 16 metrov dolga in 8 metrov široka jahta. Ampak tudi pri nej so Toyotini gorivne celice zgolj pomožna energija. Glavni energent je namreč veter. 
Catamaran Dreamyacht, 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 en aval du pont de la Concorde, en taman évitage pour un cap aval. Be, be, be careful, you put the... Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. So I sped it up, right. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it's, uh, the, the speed is limit on, on the scene, 15 km maximum. Can you compare the using the electric motors versus diesel? The more different, it's the sensibility of, with the command. When I put up the speed, go like this. Ah, of course. It's a little bit different. It's more quiet and no, no smell. We stop him as they were is the tih electric autobus ki pa svoja elektriko pridobiva iz Tojotinih gorivnih celic. S tem avtobusom se odpelimo do eno uro oddaljenega dirkališča Dru, preke tam smo namreč preizkusili nekaj vozil, pri katerih pa vodik je najbolj optimalen energent. Na to pravega Hiluxa je seveda treba voziti po terenu, ampak zdaj tukaj na tem asfaltnem kratkem dirkališču imamo priložnost, da primerjamo tega Hiluxa na gorivne celice s Hiluxom, ki vozi na baterije in pa Hiluxa s klasičnim dizelskim pogonom, ki ima en mehen elektromotorček. Seveda, ko bodimo o blagem hibridu. Torej, lahko rečemo, da gremo zdaj iz ta lahkega električnega Hiluxa v tistega, ki je bistveno težji. Ja, električni avtomobili so težki in električni Hilux je svojo maso pokazal v prav vsakem zavoju tirkališča. To, da slabše vozne lastnosti so manj pomembna slabost električnega pogona, ključen faktor primerjave so namreč stroški. Visoka masa seveda pomeni nižjo nosilnost in pa nižje zaslužke. Vendar le govorimo o gospodarskih vozilih. As soon as you start to need more heavy vehicles, you have more four-wheel drive requirements, you have uh, much more mileage that you need to cover. At that time, there will be the sweet spot for hydrogen. Tesla One is now using one megawatt hour of battery. That's quite a, a big battery. We can put about 80 kilogram of hydrogen and achieve about 800 kilometers. And that is very lightweight, so you can focus on transporting goods rather than transporting batteries. V poslu seveda velja, da čas je denar in še posebej pri velikih poslih velja, da čas, če ga naporabimo za dejansko delo oziroma za pridobivanje denarja, v resnici zelo veliko stane. A wire can bring you one tenth of the energy transport into the vehicle compared to, for instance, gasoline. And that is why it takes ten times longer. A Tesla, Tesla, one megawatt hour battery. Okay, so if we want to fully charge that battery at a megawatt, 1000 kilowatt, you would need one hour. So that duration has a cost. That kind of a cost, we also need to include into the difference between hydrogen and electrical energy. We cannot just compare the hydrogen price or the electricity price. It's an opportunity cost because you can't drive. And at the same time, you're just standing still and you need space. I just heard of a story in Texas where there is a company that has like 100 refueling stations. If they want to cater for the same kind of electric vehicles, which take 10 times more time to charge, they need 10 times the space. In the heavy duty, there's such a big work still to be done. So we are in the right city to talk about the hydrogen because even before the Olympics here you were very present with yeah. Toyota hydrogen cars, right? Yeah. What have you learned here? It's a bit of chicken and egg situation. So, so what we decided to do is to look at, okay, where can we make sure that our users will get all the necessary hydrogen and how can we balance the supply of hydrogen and utilization? So if we increase the fleet of taxis, then we will increase the, let's say, number of stations so that they're always balanced. And the benefit of that is that both parties can really make a very good business case and they can make money. And th that's essential. We need to have really a good financial viability. Otherwise, those kind of systems will not grow. We have started that in Paris quite some time ago. It's very well perceived by the taxi customers. 
because the taxi customers, they can get a car with all the maintenance inside. They get fuel at a fixed price. They get a fixed price. So actually the taxi drivers, they don't have to worry about anything. They, they just use them for their job. They run, they operate the taxis. So we can say that uh, Toyota Mirai, even though it looks like a coupe style, a nice passenger car, yeah. it's actually a commercial vehicle. Of course, the car will be available for private users if they can, if they can handle and if they can use it. But we think the next step is really increase the use of hydrogen, the hydrogen amount. And that we should do through fleets. Then the infrastructure can start to reduce the price. They can scale up. And then it will become, again, much more easily available for the private customers. If we look at the regulation, for instance, for trucks, the, the, the main big stations that we will see grow is now towards 2030. These stations will be for trucks, but they will also be accessible for passenger cars. So stations will continue to increase. In all of Europe, every 200 kilometer, and in big cities, that's quite a lot of stations. If all these stations are economically viable, then the ball will start to roll. Krogla se bo začela vrteti, ko bo posel finančno vzdržen in to poslušamo tudi na predstavitvah električnih tovornjakov. Ampak ali sta si elektrotransport in pa vodikov transport sploh izključujoča? We don't think we should fix ourselves on one solution. The solution is probably a mix. Have a certain part of electric and a certain part of, for instance, hydrogen or e-fuels or whatever. Because that combination is probably from a cost-effectiveness point of view better than try to do 100% electric. We need to develop many solutions because there's still a lot of potential for development in all those other multi-pathway applications. Da bo treba posel z baterijskimi električnimi tovornjaki in pa posel z gorivnimi celicami kombinirati, no to so podarili tudi v Hanovru na predstavitvi Mercedesovega električnega tovornjaka. Za vaš naslednji klik torej predlagam, da Isto idejo zdaj poslušate še iz druge perspektive. Namreč, tako bo lažje razumeti, kako ta miks dveh tehnologij razporediti.